G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, it's Friday here in Australia, so the weekend's upon us and Bitcoin has moved uh, and it's broken above the 16,000. And I'm wondering if this might be the reason. So PayPal's crypto trading has gone live in the US. I didn't think this was supposed to happen until next year, but it sounds like it's happened quickly. And also, they were only originally going to be allowed to trade up to ten thousand uh, dollars. It's gone straight to twenty thousand. So I think this is most likely had a big part in uh, Bitcoin's price surge because yeah, sixteen thousand three hundred. It's at the moment. Uh, and look, I think we're going to get that all-time high by the end of the month. I really think it's going to crack uh, in November, and I don't see any major pullbacks happening until we might get some selling resistance at twenty thousand. But I really think it's probably not going to come till after, till maybe 25, 35,000. I think that's when we'll probably start to see some bigger retracements. But look, the FOMO is just starting at the moment. The bull run, this is where it starts to get exciting. Uh, and we'll go into that further, but let's continue on with this story. So on Thursday, PayPal's crypto trading and payments went live for all ed eligible customers in the United States. So this is just United States. This hasn't even started worldwide yet. So once it goes worldwide, because PayPal's a you know, multinational company, I think the price is going to surge even more. I'm, I'm really starting to think this is going to be a super cycle, that it is going to get absolutely massive. Uh, and I, I spoke about this yesterday and I have spoken about it before. I'm not sure what the exact maximum price is going to be, but it could be astronomical. It, it, this could be something that just really blows everyone right out of the water. But look, with all of that, you know, there's downsides as well. And we'll get on to another story that uh, is a bit of a downer. But anyway, uh, it, you, we've got to keep everything in mind. There's always, you know, uh, two sides to every sort of story. So there's the good side, the bullish side, and then there's the bearish side. But let's focus on the bullish at the moment. Per its updated announcement, PayPal ended its wait list for customers looking to use cryptocurrency in the US trading features. Uh, sorry, uh, in the US trading features, a limit of 20,000 per week, which is double the original announcement. I reckon this will probably go up uh, again. You know, they've seen what Square uh, Cash App has been doing and the money that they've make, uh, been making, and they are itching to get on board. Now, PayPal ultimately plans to make crypto payments available at 26 million merchants globally. 26 million merchants globally. Imagine when that gets out to the public and they don't have to worry about, uh, you know, seed phrases and all the rest of it. And look, I understand this ideally isn't the way that you want to be using cryptocurrencies, but this is how it will go to the masses. Uh, it's just too hard, particularly for older generations than that who aren't computer savvy and those who uh, come from sort of third world countries and again aren't computer savvy. They may be able to use a phone fairly easy, uh, but you know, seed phrases and all the rest of it, it'll be too much. This is what is really going to push its major adoption. Uh, and again, uh, this could be a super cycle that really just sends Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies in general to a level that we just can't imagine. Time will tell, could be completely wrong. A representative told Cointelegraph that PayPal will notify US customers about the general availability of crypto services in the coming days. Dan Shulman, CEO of PayPal, noted that the shift to supporting crypto was driven by what he sees as an inevitable drift towards virtual currencies. <laughs> I, I think that, uh, that part's true. I think what he really should have said but didn't want to say is the inevitable money that Square App was making because they made, oh, I can't even remember off the top of my head now, I think it was a couple of million dollars in the first month and more than a couple of million I mean a lot of millions of dollars in the first month of uh, trading Bitcoin and all the rest of it and they were just like right here we need to get on board because it is now the inevitable this is happening and there's another story that we'll get to about the EU talking about the digital dollar uh, they've had a meeting over the last two days and we'll get to that story soon we're going digital everything's been going digital for a long long time and it's not going to stop anytime soon the shift, the, sh the shift, sorry, <laughs> the shift to digital forms of currency is inevitable, bringing with it clear advantages in terms of financial inclusion and access, efficiency, speed, and resilience of the payment system, and the ability for governments to disburse funds to citizens quickly. Again, the stimulus packages and all that. Uh, 
It's so true. They need this money to get there quickly and it doesn't need to be held up by banks and waiting for checks to clear, you know, and all that kind of stuff. So much anticipated global services are expected to launch at the beginning of 2021 alongside crypto payments on Venmo. So something that PayPal owns as well. PayPal initially announced its plans to integrate crypto three weeks ago. So three weeks and they've already started. They fast track that and again I believe it's because they saw how much money uh, Square Cash App made. The announcement led to a boost in BTC price and again this is all news just coming out and BTC has risen. As part of its crypto services PayPal received the first conditional bit license from the New York Department of Financial Services, one of the most hawkish uh, subnational financial regulators in the U.S. Many noted that in term that the terms of PayPal's crypto services would entail that coins bought on the platform would not be able to leave, likely as part of its compromise with regulators in bringing crypto services to such a wide user base. So this is all bullish now. The, uh, most of the information, actually all of the information I got was from Cointelegraph today. They had a couple of really good stories. So number one, I think PayPal has pushed the price of Bitcoin up and I think it's going to continue to push it up. This is going to continue to move uh, at some rapid rates. Now, so Ray Dalio believes nations will outlaw Bitcoin if BTC price keeps rising. I disagree. I, I think it's too late for that. That boat has sailed. They've regulated it. Uh, and they're just going to tax it. That's what they're going to do. There's money to be made. They're not worried about uh, how much it becomes worth because they will just make their money from the taxes. That's simply what is going to happen. They're just going to get their taxes. And it needs regulation and good regulation, not over-regulation. We don't want to stifle it and then basically turn Bitcoin into the antiquated system that we have now that you know can't really be used uh, properly. And you have to have Nostro and... Uh, accounts and all of that not that that would happen with bitcoin but we don't want to over regulate these cryptocurrencies so they they stifle the progress that it's bringing we should be able to transact money with anyone around the world in a split second like sending an email like sending a text it should be able to happen that fast over regulate it uh, and then all of a sudden uh, that doesn't happen uh, and again you know there's stories that the big banks manipulated the price of gold for years. We don't want governments or you know banks or whatever to come in and do the same to Bitcoin and hold the price down so that you know the money isn't there to be made. And that is that is a worry. That is a concern that I have if regulation gets too heavy. And particularly, you know, if nations get scared and spooked by Bitcoin and, like Ray Dalio says, tries to outlaw it. I don't think that's going to happen. I think, you know, some smaller countries uh, that are, you know, heavily governed, that may happen. I don't think it's going to happen in the, the developed nations. I think they're just going to roll with it. They're going to see, all right, let's let Bitcoin do its thing because it, it can be taxed. And it's just another revenue for them to make money. They could ban Bitcoin, sure, but then they lose all that tax money. Why would they? Uh, again, you know, places like China and Iran and places like that, you know, that are heavy, you know, governed by, uh, well, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, very authoritarian, you know what I mean? Uh, and, you know, Russia as well, places like that could. But again, I just, I don't think they will. There's money to be made from it. Uh, so why would they? It won't, Bitcoin is not going to stop any countries. Uh, native currency if it's a good currency if it's a really bad one like Venezuela and things like that uh, in places in Africa yeah of course why would they that's why they're going to move to Bitcoin you give them a dollar that is uh, valuable and you know can be easily used and won't just be uh, printed to infinity uh, and stupidity like unfortunately has happened in some countries people will still use the dollar. They're not going to use Bitcoin to do their day-to-day -day shopping. The fees will just get too much and things like that. Bitcoin will be a store of wealth. That is its thing. I don't think it'll ever be used as a currency. It just, there's not enough of it. At some stage, you know, you divide, you know, the 21 million by a million different pieces. There's just not enough to go around. It will be a store of value uh, and that will be its thing. As for day-to-day -day currencies and things like that, yeah, I think something else. Again, the CBDs, they're going to be the go. Uh, and, you know, if countries have a, you know, as responsible as we can say, uh, financial system, 
Bitcoin isn't going to destroy it. It's only going to add value to it. So um, I don't think this will uh, happen on the broader scope, on the smaller scope. Certain countries, yes, may look to do it. But again, I think it's all, all too late. It's, it, it's happening. It's been regulated. You know, countries have tried to ban it. Uh, it's considered legal tender, uh, tender uh, a legal currency uh, in a number of countries. Like in Australia, the one of the courts accepted it. I think it was the Supreme Court of Australia, or it might have been a magistrate's court, but I think it was the Supreme Court, uh, said they were happy to take Bitcoin uh, as bond money, and that was it. So that was uh, the, the rule in Australia that, yep, uh, it's basically you know a form of currency and was accepted, uh, and I don't think that's going to change. And again, countries like Australia and other ones, they're getting right into blockchain. Not so much Bitcoin as such, but blockchain is Bitcoin. That's where it all started. You get rid of Bitcoin, you're kind of you know, starting to get rid of blockchain. So I just don't see it happening. But it is concerning. So again, PayPal news, super bullish. This uh, news from Ray Dalio, super bearish. Now we go over to here. EU will decide on the digital euro in January 2021. So they were having a conference over the last two days speaking about a multitude of things and I thought uh, that we might get some news about a, a CBDC, uh, but they've decided to hold off until January. So we can have a read here. Uh, at that point in time, we will make the decision as to whether or not we f uh, go forward with the digital euro. Now, uh, they did say further down here, here, in an online policy uh, panel held on November the 12th, Lagarde stated that the European Central Bank, or ECB, was not racing to be the first in its efforts to release a central bank digital currency or a CBDC. However, she said that the results of the consultation uh, the central bank launched in October on a digital euro would be uh, ready in January 21. At that point in time, we will make the decision as to whether or not we go forward with the digital euro, uh, Lagarde stated. My hunch, but this is a decision that will uh, be taken collectively, as that we might well go in that direction. I think it is uh, almost guaranteed. Something could happen where they don't, but I just think it's likely to happen. And down here it talks about Facebook's Libra token. That is what really pushed all the countries to go we need to hurry up and get on board. They can't have Facebook's Libra come out because that will then be the world digital currency. And they don't want one, you know, social media platform having all that power. Uh, and again, the you know, China's digital yuan, if they are the first to do it and then no one else does it, guess what currency is likely just going to be used worldwide because it's so easy to use and doesn't take days to get uh, exchanged. And again, no, 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 uh, Vostro accounts and all the rest of it. So that is why I think it will happen. 100% they'll sign off on it. If it's not in January, they'll be announced in January uh, that it's coming in March or June or July or something like that. They are going to go to a digital dollar. Australia is going to go to a digital dollar. The US is going to go to a digital dollar. Everywhere is going to go to a digital dollar. It is just the way of the future. The system we have now is antiquated. There's been no innovation in it for a long, long time and it just doesn't work. Uh, and again, countries want to get away from using the US dollar as the, uh, the standard because they can be uh, heavy regulated. You know, again, countries like Iran and other ones like that, the US just says, no, you can't use uh, the US dollar and then they're really stuck. Once everybody has their own uh, national, you know, uh, central bank digital currency, then they don't need to use the US dollar. Uh, and look, there's good sides and bad sides to that. Bad sides that, you know, we can't try and regulate rogue countries and that, but good side that, again, we don't have the holdups with sending money and being able to buy from overseas and things like that that we currently have. So, uh, very interesting. Now, let's get over and have a look at the price. So we'll just refresh. At the moment, 470 billion, 16,300. I haven't refreshed this for a little while, so let's see if it's gone up. has gone up, still moving. So 71 billion now, 16,376 and moving. And uh, this is an overall, 
Uh, look at that uh, BTC. It did rise. I, I was susp- suspicious yesterday. I was like, oh, maybe we're not going to see the 65% dominance. I think we are. And I think we'll probably hit that 65% dominance once it hits 25, once it hits around 20,000. Uh, I think it's going to rise and I think we might see somewhere up to about 75% dominance once it gets to 20,000, maybe up to 25 to 35,000. And once it reaches those prices, I think then the uh, it will start to reduce and I think people are going to start to move into uh, altcoins in a big way. I mean, altcoins are already coming back right now, but BTC dominance is strong and I think it will continue to grow. And especially with PayPal, uh, you know, most people are just going to buy Bitcoin. There's only a few coins on offer from PayPal. I think it's Ethereum. So Ethereum is going to grow and it is growing. Bitcoin's going to grow. Uh, I think Litecoin's going to grow. Uh, I think there was Zcash. There was a couple of coins there. But those coins, once Bitcoin just seems kind of too expensive, everyone's going to start to look at those other ones. And there's only a few that they can look out through look at through PayPal. So again, I think Litecoin is possibly going to really you know, get a move on. Uh, again, when people look at Bitcoin and go, oh God, 16,000. And then they look at Litecoin and go, I can buy a whole Litecoin for 60 bucks, but I can't, you know, buy a whole one for less than 16,300 in Bitcoin. People will start to pile into uh, Litecoin. I can just see it. And, you know, again, even Litecoin, at let's say $500, people who've only got maybe $1,000 or $2,000 to invest in are going to look towards the cheaper one. They're just going to say, I want to own more of it than less of it, not understanding that Bitcoin uh, could possibly pump more. But look, Litecoin's an oscillator and it generally pumps more than Bitcoin. But that could be changing because generally Litecoin pumps first and then Bitcoin follows. And in this uh, in this case, that hasn't happened. So look, things could change. Uh, and I, I made a video the other day. Is Litecoin, you know, completely dead in the water because its dollar value is going up? It's 100% going up, but its BTC value is going down. So BTC is just completely outperforming it at the moment. But look, BTC is outperforming pretty much everything, you know, except for, you know, some sort of altcoins here and there. But definitely over the last few weeks, uh, it's had some pretty good gains. But again, ETH, ETH is doing well. All right, so gas prices, oh, coming down so low, that is so awesome. Uh, Again, we need to see these really in single digits. Uh, but I think the layer two solutions that are happening uh, are definitely starting to work. Uh, and I think a lot of the the ETH gas prices when it goes up is people getting into uh, Ethereum 2.0 at the moment. But time will tell. Let's have a look. What are the big movers? What's really moved? Blockstack. Nice. Very, very happy with Blockstack. That is uh, some really good gains. But, you know, we've got to expect that there's going to be a pullback at some time soon. So, uh, yeah, keep an eye out for that. Uh, Vite, don't really know too much about them. Dash, good to see they're finally making some moves. Kasama, Z, uh, Zcash. Again, no real major sort of moves though, other than a few coins, just kind of single digit stuff, which is still good. Don't get me wrong, loving the single digits, but nothing kind of astronomical at the moment. But it is building. You can feel that it's coming. Things are going to start to get really, really crazy really quickly. And again, Litecoin. We can see it's already starting to move one of the better performers. So that's really nice. What about the big losers? What do we got? All right, Ample Fourth uh, has not done too well. But again, that's supposed to be at around about a dollar. So it's still got a little ways to go. Yearn Finance it was always going to have some kind of pullback. I mean, again, you know, nearly doubled its price. Uh, but again, just kind of single digit losses, really. Not too bad. But then you jump over to the seven day. They've all had big sort of gains. So, yeah, not too bad at all. Uh, Synthetics Network, again, they did really good. And so they pulled back. But again, a little bit of green there. So, yeah, not too bad. Now, last but not least, let's have a look at the actual Bitcoin chart. So this is that previous high that we've had. We have well and truly broken through it. And we can see $16,428. Things are moving. Now, again, it's the weekend and there's generally a pullback. Not always, but generally. So just you know, understand that there could be a pullback. But we have broken out of this. And if we try and get in uh, really close, we have had pullbacks. So we broke out. 
we pulled back, we retested uh, this sort of trend line here, and then we stayed within it, and now we've broken out above. So I don't think there's any chance that we're going to roll back over here and see 13,800. I just, I think there's too much exuberance. There's too much, uh, it's not even FOMO at the moment, although people can FOMO in a little bit. It's, the space is getting ready to really move. And a lot of people are going to start to get in. As I said before, a lot of big institutional buyers, they really wanted to see this break and make sure that it wasn't a fake out. So something that kind of went up above and then started to drop all the way back down here. That hasn't happened. It broke out. It came down. It found a bottom and it's just pushed up and it keeps finding a new bottom and pushing up, finding a new bottom pushing up. So it has retested in it in here. It hasn't been just a quick move up and then quickly drops back down and starts to make its way back down here. That hasn't happened. So again, this is the all time high. This is like 19,000 sort of $600, $700. We are moving towards that fast. And I think this is going to rapidly happen. I think we break the all time high by the end of November. I think probably within the next sort of 10 days, we're probably going to break that. Uh, again, we could have a bit of a pullback over the weekend. So maybe we come back down and sort of test these levels. So 15,600, maybe sort of 15,500. That's definitely possible. And it may happen uh, today, being Friday or Saturday or Sunday. Sometimes even on occasions, it might happen Monday morning. But I don't think it's going to be anything major. Again, we really zoom out. This is our old old all time high. Have a look at that. We're basically halfway between the blue and the green already. I think this is going to get covered up very, very quickly. I don't think it's going to take long. Again, we may have that pullback over the weekend, but I think next week we probably come and test this. Now, we could have some resistance at breaking through this. It's possible that people, again, who may be bought in down here, you know, they're buying in at 3000 sort of that $19,000 level, you know, they've they've made pretty good gains they're 6x up nearly you know not quite 5x up so i think it's quite possible that there's some selling pressure at 20,000 but in saying that i think there's every chance we just rocket straight through it uh, and don't see too many pullbacks other than the odd little pullback and you know the weekend pullback that we traditionally get but i think it's not until we're going to get to so again i'll pull this down here i don't think we're going to see too much pullbacks until somewhere between 25 and 35,000. I think around about there, uh, there's definitely a chance that we start to see some more market fluctuation. Again, people are going to be jumping in and out of trades and things like that. But yeah, I don't see any major pullbacks like this uh, or like this or you know even like this until after 25,000. And look, 25,000 may even be a little bit early. I think maybe it might be more the 35,000 to 50,000 before we really start to see some major, yeah, sort of corrections. That's just my point. That's my personal point of view. It's not financial advice. I never offer financial advice, but just have a look at that. That, again, this, you know, if we push it up, like we used to have this looks like such a big move you know when we sorry going the other way and then i'll pull this down this all looked really really big when you stretch it out like that so i mean this looks like such a major move you're like oh my god look look how volatile it is but once you start to do this it all of a sudden doesn't start to look so volatile so again this is now 20,000 29,000 so again somewhere between 25,000 and 35,000 we might start to see some pullbacks but if we start to get up to 200,000 this is just a tiny little blip uh, and again I don't know what the the price is I think our bare minimum for the cycle high is going to be somewhere around about here, 75, 85,000. I think that'll be the bare minimum for the cycle high. I think 100,000 is quite easily achievable. Uh, and look, 200 plus thousand to maybe half a million dollars, uh, it's not completely out of the realms. It's really stretching, you know, the envelope and all the rest of it. But I think it is possible 
that Bitcoin could see a half a million dollars in this. I'm, I think it's highly unlikely. I'm just saying I think it's possible if people really start to pile into it and we get that mass adoption. And, you know, again, the, a lot of institutions still aren't even into Bitcoin. They're just now starting to make their moves. And some of them are still hesitant. They are going to wait until it breaches here. It's just that human psychology. They're like, oh, no, nah, it, it's been higher before. So they don't want to touch it until it's breached to this. And then for whatever reason, their human psychology says, oh, now it's pumping. Now's the time to jump in. And look, I'm not saying 20000 would even be a bad price to buy Bitcoin. I think in the long term, not financial advice, personal opinion, I think it, it's got such a massive upside. I think 20000 still won't be a bad price. And really, all the Bitcoin that I'm buying up until 20000 not that I'm buying that much, but you know, when I do my you know, dollar cost averaging, it, it's my long term hodl. I don't think Bitcoin is going to come back down below $20,000 in the next cycle low. Uh, again, particularly if it makes 200,000, 170,000, I think its cycle low is probably going to be more around sort of the forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 mark. So again, really anything bought under that price, you could consider your long-term hodl and then anything after that would be more, you know, again, once you think it's hit the cycle high, you're going to start to sell off the Bitcoin that, uh, you know, you purchased there. Now that's just my personal opinion and sort of what my personal plan will be as well. I, you know, Again, anything under 20000 uh, it's long-term hodl. I don't plan on doing anything with it other than just holding on to it. After 20000 I'll just kind of have to make my decision. Really, anything after 20000 uh, is Bitcoin that I'm going to sell once I believe we've reached uh, the, the cycle high and not the exact high, just thereabouts. But my uh, long-term hodl, again, if we make 280000 which Plan B's model says, then really anything up to about sort of forty to 50000 is going to be our Bitcoin long-term huddle. And I'm only going to sell what I bought after that, getting up to that sort of point. Anyway, that's for me. That's my personal opinion. That's my strategy. Let me know what your strategy is. Are you just simply buying and no matter what the price is, you're just holding? Because, you know, that still works as well. You just got to know that at some stage it's going to be, you know, a, a sort of somewhat hefty pullback. Um or do you have, again, similar to me, do you have a point where you say anything under that price is long-term hodl Bitcoin? I'm not going to sell that Bitcoin. But any Bitcoin I buy after that price is what I will sell off to take some profits and buy back in at a later stage. Love to know what your thoughts are uh, on that. Uh, and do you think PayPal has really kind of, you know, sorry, we'll have to fix this back up. Do you think... Uh, Bitcoin, uh, sorry, do you think PayPal, I'll move that by accident, has played a part in pushing this up? Uh, I really think that news has been, uh, been going the wrong way. There we go. Yeah, I think PayPal news has had a lot to do with uh, pushing this price up. All right, I won't take up any more of your time. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hit that like button down below. Hit that subscribe button. Hopefully you're on that gain train. Most of us should be if you're invested in just about anything at the moment. They're all going up. And I'll see you next time.